Hi everyone, it's Steve Martin here from sidemounting.com. Um, I'm going to answer a tech training frequently asked question. Well, it's actually a few questions. Um, I'm answering these as part of my online um, side mount training videos. And this is a segment on um, technical training. Now, what people ask is what to do if your deco regulator free flows. How, obviously, how do you breathe from it? Can you switch regulator first stages underwater? Can you breathe from a low pressure regulator hose itself? And can you breathe directly from a cylinder without a regulator? Now, what I do as part of my technical training is uh, actually have a regulator which is simulated to free flow all the time. And I conduct certain skills with that. Now, it's not a question of you know, can you breathe from a low pressure reg hose and can you breathe from um, a cylinder valve? It really should be a question of should you? And for me, I would say it's unsafe to do that and it's definitely not needed. So you can see I'm turning on the valve here and the regulator's free flowing. And now flutter on, off. To make it uh, more interesting, I remove the mouthpiece. And this happens because, like you see here, you can get tears in the mouthpiece and it might be much simpler to remove it. A good idea is to keep a backup in your pouch, a uh, cable tie, and a mouthpiece. There you can see there, air was on, air was off. And again, air on, air off. So I'm feathering the valve or flutter breathing it. One of the problems are, if there wasn't a cable tie on it, and the regulator mouthpiece did stay in your mouth, most divers can actually have a problem with this. And, uh, you know, you still think you're breathing from the regulator because it actually feels like that. So a good tip there is to always check your um, equipment prior to going in and take a good look at the mouthpiece for wear and tear, but also that the cable tie itself is uh, secured and the mouthpiece uh, won't come off like it has done here. So now I'm removing the uh, second stage. And this is just to show you a test of, um, you know, why the, you shouldn't breathe directly from a low pressure regulator hose. Um, I'm not actually gonna do that here. I'm just gonna show you how much pressure actually comes through it. And you can see it's quite a surprising amount. And, you know, being able to vary that amount yourself with the hand wheel on the cylinder, or the cylinder valve wheel, um, it's just not practical and why would a dive ever need to do this um, if your regulator didn't work you can use another one the regulator's job basically is to regulate the pressure you breathe right so without the regulator no diver can breathe effectively and safely to exit a dive or to actually make deco so one of the things you could do is remove the first stage which you see a diver doing here, switch it with a working one off your other cylinder and then screw it back on. Um, you're gonna need to purge it now because there'll be water in it, of course. So I'll give it a good purge. And now you can see the air comes out and the diver then would uh, be able to breathe effectively from it. Now, of course, if you're going to do this, you must get that regulator serviced and the first stage um, by a service technician after the dive. My preference would always be to switch out the first stage if I thought fluttering the valve would cause me more stress uh, or was difficult on a decompression stop that I was trying to make. Trying to breathe directly from a cylinder valve without a regulator, I would just forget this. I mean, you know, there's no divers that really are ever going to need to do that should they be planning their gas management reserves properly. One of the best things you can do to ensure you don't need to do this is to, one, carry a spare mouthpiece and cable tie in your side mount pouch and also get your first stage and second stage serviced regularly. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. You can find more videos like this and uh, actually watch promotional 
videos about my complete online training series and they're found at my website, uh, that's sidemounting.com. A massive thank you as well to all the people who have invested in my online training videos so far. If you want to drop any comments on the video and let me know what you thought of it, that would be appreciated.